Hey, what's up guys? It's Thea with Gingham and Glue. Welcome back to my channel. Thanks for joining me again today. Um, I know it's been a while. Uh, again, <laughs> I was supposed to have a video up last week uh, in regards to this little beauty. Uh, but of course that did not happen. So, <clears throat> you know, is what it is. But I hope everyone's doing okay. Um, I want to thank all of my new subscribers. Thank you so much. I, it means the world to me. You have no idea. So thank you, thank you. And of course, to all of my uh, regular subscribers and for sticking around. I appreciate it. Um, I'm, I had a little bit of a setback, um, again, physically. Um, did something, to, I don't know, to my, my hip area. I don't, it's just, it's been weird, but, um, it's getting better. And, uh, yeah, I'm just, I get, I, except for this little setback, um, I, I get better every day. The, we had about seven days of straight rain here not too long ago, which was part of the reason why I didn't get, um, my video up, um, it, it just nailed me. Oh my gosh. It was horrible. Uh, could not get out of bed hardly at all for probably about three days. It was just horrible. Um, and we got some great weather. I actually got some seeds planted this weekend and then, yeah, now the weather is gross again. So, <laughs> but I'm, I'm feeling okay. So yeah, I, Desperately needed to get in here and show you guys what I have been working on. I posted just kind of a little um, uh, quick pic of this in on my Instagram uh, last week, and I had promised that I was going to get, you know, the video up, and yeah, that didn't happen, like I said. So I apologize for that. Um, this comes with just a little bit of an explanation. Um, I got an email probably about a week and a half ago, so or now, or something like that, um, from Graphic 45 Papers, and they are currently auditioning, um, brand ambassadors. And I thought, oh my gosh, you know, I'm, I'm technically very new to the junk journaling world. I've only been doing it since last August. But I tell you what, you know, I've, and I've said it before, you know, you know when you found your thing, right? I have been a crafter my whole life. You know, I crochet, I knit, I did scrapbooking for quite some time. Um, I, you know, I paint, I do a little bit of drawing, not a whole lot of drawing, more painting than anything. Um, and yeah, just ugh, junk journals are just, have they've become my life. They've taken over my life, which is great. <laughs> to me it is, sometimes to my husband not so much, but you know. Um anyway, so yeah, they were they're auditioning for brand ambassadors and so I thought I would take a giant leap out of my comfort zone and go ahead and try to um come up with a tutorial because that's what they're asking for uh is for a video tutorial. Um when I started making this, I was recording videos and I realized very quickly that because of, because I'm already a slow crafter and because of, you know, my health setbacks here and there with, you know, my chronic pain and stuff, it would have taken me probably five or six videos to get this finished and for you. And I just, you know, that that's just not going to happen. So this is actually very, very, very simple. Um, so I am going to do a, just a, a brief walkthrough tutorial, um, on how I made this and trust me when I say it is very easy. There's, there are a lot of, um, tedious and fussy things that you have to do. Um, just, but once it's done, it, it's, it's so worth it, you guys. Um, but very, very, very simple. So in the beginning, what I wanted to do, they had said that you did not have to use their product. They recommended it, but they didn't, you didn't have to. Well, I have always coveted Graphic 45's paper and their ephemera and all of it. 
but I'd never purchased anything. So I broke down and I bought their new bird watcher kit. And if you haven't seen it, you definitely need to go look at it because it's beautiful. Um, I ended up getting the large kit and I apologize. I don't, I, I everything's kind of broken apart and punched out and cut up. And, you know, so I don't have, um, the, all of the pieces. Cause you know, of course a lot of it went into this. Um, let me move this to the side and I'll, I'll see what I can show you. So I ended up getting the large kit, which comes with, um, this is the main bird watcher kit and it comes with two sheets each of, that's the patterns and solids of this gorgeous paper. Sorry, let me pull this out. Um, this is the front page. You get, you get so much stuff guys. It's just unbelievable in this kit. Um, there's, there's two sheets each of the, um, journaling cards. There's two sheets each of stamps. Um, yeah, it's just, it's just beautiful, beautiful, beautiful paper. Then, um, what also comes with it is, oh, and the, the front and back cover, of the paper pads come with templates you can cut out, which is awesome, and I did that. So I've got templates for other things, so that's great. Um, I also purchased the um, Solids and Patterns Coordinating Paper Pad. Um, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful paper. Love this stuff, it's so pretty. And you also get in the big kit, you get two well, actually, it ends up being four um, sheets of their stickers, which is awesome. Um, you also get, sorry, loud, um, their chipboard and laser cut ephemera. Um, and I mean, it's just, it's just awesome. Awesome, awesome, you guys. Got a clock and tickets and just all kinds of really, really, really fun stuff. So definitely go take a look. Uh, but in the beginning, I had thought about doing a nest, um, in the shape of a nest, uh, to, you know, a little mini journal, but in the end, a birdcage won out. Um, I got very strong opinions from my mom and my sister. They were both like, birdcage. So I hopped onto Etsy to see if I could find a birdcage template, and sure enough, I did. This is a mini journal kit from the store on Etsy is called by digital papers, B Y digital papers. Um, and this is an adorable kit. It's a shabby chic, uh, look to it. And I'm definitely going to be doing this for sure because it's adorable and it even comes with a sheet of ephemera uh, to decorate it with. So definitely gonna be doing this, uh, this particular kit in the future. But of course, all I needed was the bird cage and one of the solid pieces. So what I did was I, and this is printed on regular cardstock. I cut out the bird cage I used an X-Acto knife to cut out all the little individual inside pieces. And then I took the bird cage and I glued it directly to some craft card stock. Um, this is, I get a pack of these on Amazon. There's like, I don't know, 20, 25 pieces for $10, I think, if I'm not mistaken. I just ordered a whole bunch more because I use them for everything. Um, so yeah, so I glued it to the craft card stock and then cut out the individual inside pieces again. I could have just cut out the outside of the bird cage, glued it onto the craft card, and then cut out all my individual pieces. But I would have been cutting through two layers, um, and my hands tend to hurt, you know, when I'm using my X-Acto knife, and you know, it just yeah. So I did it the other way. Um, okay. So once that was on the craft card stock and cut out, um, then I went in to uh, decorating the front of the cage. So 
What I used was Distress Oxide, um, the Tim Holtz or Ranger Distress Oxide. I used Bundled Sage, Weathered Wood, and um, Stormy Sky. I set the birdcage down just on a blank piece of cardstock, and I used my ink dauber to literally just blend the three colors up and together. And that, that was it for that. So once that was done, then I decided I needed to go in and sand up all of the rough edges. Um, I knew I wanted a weathered look on the birdcage, and I wasn't sure if I wanted to use gesso or white acrylic paint, um, but then I decided to, got a little, oh no, that's the, that's the stamp, sorry. Um, the, I just decided to use the sandpaper um, to distress it. So I used, in order to sand up, you know, smooth up all the edges and sand out some of those spots on the birdcage, I used a fine grit sandpaper. It was a, it's a 220. Um, and then once I had it exactly how I liked it, I then, I knew I wanted to put a Mod Podge layer over it, um, you know, to seal everything in. But I didn't want to use Mod Podge directly on the Distress Oxide because I was afraid it was going to smear and it wasn't going to look as good. So I have a can of um, matte spray varnish. Uh, you can get it at any craft store. Um, I think my brand is Windsor & Newton. It's just a matte varnish spray. So I took it outside and I gave it a really, really good coat. I let it dry. And then after I was done with that, I brought it back in and then I put a, a good layer of matte Mod Podge over it. Okay. So once that was done, I then decided I really wanted some stamping on it. So I have this swirl stamp, um, for lack of a better word. Uh, and I used uh, Rangers Archival Ink, their permanent waterproof, and that will stamp on to Mod Podge surfaces and stay. So that's what I did. I just lightly stamped over it. Um, and then I needed to decide if I was going to leave the birdcage just as the cover itself or I if I wanted to glue a piece of paper to the back of it. Um, and I decided in the end, I wanted to put the paper, glue the paper to the back of it because I wanted to firm the birdcage up just a little bit more. I was afraid it was gonna break down um, or bend or you know whatever on its own. So that's what I did. I chose one of the paper, piece of papers from the kit and glued it to the back. And then I went in and added my pieces of ephemera. So awesome, the kit had a, um, keyhole and a key from their laser cut dies and then I used one of their chipboard pieces so super fun okay then comes the very tedious tedious part I needed to cut out all of my papers and decide how many I was going to have uh, what I wanted that kind of thing so I went ahead and actually let me backtrack here just a second I took one of the solid pieces of birdcage from the kit and I made myself a template out of thick chipboard that I had left over from some packaging. And that's what I used to cut out all of my papers, all my papers, okay? So the next thing was trying to decide if I wanted to just leave the pages as is and decorate on those, or if I wanted to bulk them up a little bit and use some craft card stock again to sandwich those two pieces of paper in between. And that's what I decided to do at the end because again, I wanted it to hold up uh, and withstand uh, the test of time. So yes, so that's what I did. So I cut out two pieces of paper that I wanted and sandwiched them in between uh, the car the craft card. So, and of course using my template to cut out the craft card as well. 
So, okay. So once that was all done and all my pieces, all my paper was glued to the craft card stock. So it was nice and thick. Um, then I needed to go in and cut or punch my holes. Now the holes obviously depended on the bird cage. Um, the, and, and to be honest, the only places on the bird cage that I could really put the holes were in these two spots here, these two junctions, um, because they were the strongest two places on, on the cover. So I used, once those were cut, I used this as my template to go in and punch all of my other holes through. Okay. Okay. So once that's all done, now you get to go in and decorate. And I started by making a whole bunch of ephemera. Um, I did a bunch of sewing. Uh, you, of course, you don't have to sew if you don't have a sewing machine or don't know how. Um, definitely don't have to do that. So, um, so we're going to do a, a flip through to show you exactly how I decorated it. This will be going up in my Etsy shop, um, hopefully by Monday or Tuesday of next week. Uh, so stay tuned for that. But you guys, I'm seriously so proud at how, at how this turned out. It's just adorable and I absolutely love it. So without further ado, um, backtrack just a second again. Um, you probably would have seen in my picture that I had originally tied this closed with some jute twine. Um, I ended up adding a couple of more pages. And so the jute twine, I still could have used it, but it ended up being a royal pain in the neck to get threaded through the holes. And I was, I was just, it was driving me insane. And then it hit me that I had still had all this green sari silk left over that I'd actually used for to do some ruffles in here. And uh, which is also from Sheila Gingrich with Boho Daydreams. Thank you again, Sheila. Love my sari silk. Um, and I love, love how this turned out. Love how it turned out with the with the sari silk. I think it's just so pretty. So, okay. So we, we open it up. On our first page, we've got a corner tuck here. Uh, like I said, I had done some ruffles. I also did some ruffles with some ribbon um, that my sister had given me not too long ago, and it turned out perfect for this. So we've got a corner tuck. I've got a little coin pouch here. It just flips out a little stamp from the kit. Put a piece of um, tea-stained paper in here and just stamped it. Uh, with a little feather. Uh, I did do have some some awesome stamps that ended up going perfectly with this uh, project. Um, some stamps and some roses and a bird and yeah, just was perfect for it. So then we have this page. This was actually my very first piece of ephemera I made for, for the journal. Um, it is an, um, it's a flip down envelope, got a little enclosure there and we've got three spaces there. Let me make sure I am in camera yes I am okay um which is really fun and I ended up sewing around it did put some journaling cards from the kit in there and you're going to see a lot of those in here they're journaling cards and the journaling card pack not the paper pack um but the actual journal card pack these are double-sided and have little spots for journaling so really really cute We've got some tea stain paper. I did try to make sure I left plenty of spots for journaling. Um, had a little birdcage stamp, perfect there. Um, got a little um, glassine envelope here with a little piece of chipboard. Um, and I'll be honest, and I'm just noticing it now, um, I got this a little crooked, so I apologize ahead of time for whoever gets this, but it's still really cute. Another journaling card, little journaling cards on the inside. Ribbon ruffle there. And we've got this page. Love how this turned out. Again, some um, sewn uh, ribbon ruffle and a little piece of ephemera, a little corner tuck with some of the sari silk. Another journaling card there. Got a belly band here with a couple journaling cards and a piece of the laser cut ephemera. So cute. Love it. Then we've got some more journaling space, did a little rose, did a little feather, and this is my one and only flip out page. 
Really love how it turned out. Um, I used a gold paper clip with some ruffled sari silk attached to it to keep it closed. Uh, this is a sticker here. Of course, the stamp, and then we open it up. Got a little decoration down here. This is a one of the laser um, pieces of ephemera, and it had two slots on either end. So I used the ribbon to weave through that, and then just glued the whole thing down. And we've got a little kind of little bookmark journaling card. I left the card craft card stock back uh, on that versus putting um, backing it with tea stain paper because I wanted something a little bit different. So, and then we flip it over this way and we've got a little pocket there again, a little kind of little bookmark there. And then a little piece of, well, that's a tuck. And then that's a, a one of the stickers from the sticker pack lining that. A little tea stain paper with a little bird stamp. Oh, that was super cute. So we can close that up. And I did um, use some ribbon to um, close that together or to attach those two pages together. So love that. Put that back. And we've got another little corner tuck here with some journaling cards. That one upside down. Yep, that one was upside down. And I did not back that one. I need to back that one. So yeah, I'll, I'll do that. That actually came from the paper pack. So that's gonna have the paper on the other side. And a journaling card. Another belly band here with some of the laser cut ephemera little clock or stopwatch there. Really cute journaling card. This one is backed with some tea stained paper. And I did use some paper for, from some other kits, uh, This, which I thought went great with it. This is from um, Rachel at Roxy Creations. Um, did another little envelope, flip down this one a, um, a little bit smaller. And this one actually has four spots to write. Super cute. A little stamp enclosure and then a little decorated journal, lined journaling card. A little ruffle there, a little rose there, and a beautiful pocket here with a cute little tag and some more journaling cards. Did a little feather stamp there, another pocket here with that beautiful sari silk and some more journaling cards. And again, that's from Rachel with Roxy Creations. Another pocket here with a much bigger tag, decorated tag, love that. That is from another digital kit. I will see if I can't find it. Um, it's been a little while since I purchased it, so I'm not sure who it's from. Did a little piece of the um, laser cut ephemeral, a little swirl there on the corner. Beautiful pocket here with that beautiful blue ribbon. Love that. Um, I don't know if you can see or not. There's a little ephemera swirl on there. Big fat tag with a little pocket and one of the stamps. Super cute. Lined. And also... I think there's, I think I used two or three of the, from the same kit. I think this paper is from Artie Mays. I think I'll have to double check, but I'm pretty sure. Um, cut out one of the roses from, from the paper and used it as a little tuck, a little journaling card. Little stamp there, another cute little pocket with a big tag. Use some sari silk for the ribbon. Another cute little tag. More journaling cards. Did a little bird stamp in the corner there. I used one of their chipboard uh, pieces of ephemera to hang from the finial there. Thought that was cute. Little corner tuck with a little tag. Another little corner piece with some... Um, journaling cards and then I also did another little uh, chipboard dangle there from that finial. Love that. Another beautiful little pocket there. Another journaling card and some some cotton muslin ruffle. 
and a sticker, a little stamp, rose stamp. And then we come to the back page and we've got another beautiful pocket with another journaling card, line journaling card, super cute. Do a little laser cut ephemera there and a beautiful ribbon ruffle. So that is it, you guys, that is it. I hope my, um, my explanation of things made sense to you. Uh, if, if you have any questions at all, please feel free to comment um, and ask me and I will answer as best I can. Um, but yes, it, it's very, very, very simple. It really is. It's just a lot of cutting and gluing and, you know, that kind of stuff. So it's thick. It's a little, it's a little fat, but I love it. I lo I'm so glad I decided to use the Sari Silk um, to bind it. And yeah, just very, very, very happy with it. So I hope you guys liked it or like it. Um, and I hope it inspires you to maybe try um, one of your own. And again, don't forget to check out um, the this beautiful birdcage uh I think she's calling it an album, a mini album uh, from Buy Digital Papers on Etsy. So yeah, definitely go check that out. Um, she's got some really cute other stuff too. So yeah, that is it for that one. Um, I'm super excited because my wonderful husband took me on a little bit of a shopping spree the other day at Hobby Lobby. Oh, I'm so excited, you guys. So their paper stu all their paper stu paper studio stuff was half price. So I got some paper pads. I'm so excited. Where is my other one? Um, oh, okay, hang on. So I got this one because I'm getting ready to do a boho journal um, as part of my design team project with Studio Studio 28E. Um, sorry, give me just a second, you guys. I need to move some stuff so I can get to, oh, sorry. I've been, I've been printing a lot and uh, dealing with this, my stupid printer and all kinds of stuff. I've got stuff everywhere. So yeah, so I got this, which I think is going to be perfect for my boho journal. Love it. And then I got this one too, which is this beautiful. I love this stuff. It's so pretty. This is going to be great for a real spring-like journal. I just oh, I love, love this. It's so pretty. So, so pretty. Yes. Yeah, so I got both of those. I've got for the very first time and been me meaning and wanting to get, I got a bottle of glossy, uh, glossy accents. Um, I got some Tim Holtz collage paper, which was one of the other things I was really wanting. I really want to get some of his colored ones, the botanicals and the birds. And I think there's one other one. They're so pretty, um, that I want to get. Yep. So I got those. Um, oh, what else did I get? I got a whole bunch of stuff. It was insane. Um, gosh, what else? Oh, I got... Well, I got more containers for all of my individual um, craft projects. So I got like, I think it was a pack of four, four for, I don't know, $15 or something like that. So I'm super excited about that. Um, oh my gosh, what else did I get? It was a whole bunch, I'm telling you. It was a lot. Um, oh, I got... Um, I got some Tim Holtz word stickers. I also got his new um, ideology um, backdrops, um, volume one and volume two, which are awesome. Um, so I'll have to get those out later. Um, I got some of his new oh, ephemera pieces, um, another new paper dolls kit. Yeah, I, yeah, I got a bunch of stuff. So really, really excited to start using all of it. Let me tell you. Um, so then the last thing I wanted to show you, I had never made altered Rolodex files before. 
Um, I'm, I wanted to practice first because I have a swap um, that I'm getting ready to do. And so I wanted, like I said, I wanted to practice first so I could make sure I knew what I was doing um, or just to play. So yeah, so that is what I came up with. I used, um, I had a template. Uh, so I cut, this one is in craft cardstock. <clears throat> this one is just on regular cardstock. Um, it used Tim Holtz's uh, collage paper on both of them. This one, before I put down the collage paper, I colored the card with my Distress Oxide. Um, which one did I use? I used the Peacock Feathers for this one. And then I went over it with the um, collage paper with some Mod Podge. So then once that was dry, I used my big, my Fab Faber Castell big pit brush pens, uh, to color in some spots. I don't know if you can see that or not. It's has a little peachy color to it and then some green on the body. Um, and then this one, I just did some of the little circles, you know, nothing, nothing crazy. I did a little bit on the numbers and then I inked up all the edges, did line both of them with uh, tea stain paper, which I am running completely out of, and I have to get down on my hands and knees and beg my sister to make more. Um, but yeah, I just went ahead and embellished them, and super fun and cute and sewed around them. So really fun. Uh, I might do a tutorial on these. Uh, if you are interested, please uh, leave a comment, and I can definitely do a tutorial if you're interested. If not, no worries. But yeah, so that is it, you guys. I hope, like I said, I hope you love, love, love my birdcage journal as much as I do. I, like I said, I just think it turned out so cute. Love it. So, okay, that's it for me today, guys. Uh, I've got someone coming to the house to pick up my, my leg machine that I've had to use after my hip surgery. So I kind of want to keep it, but it's got to go back. So um, they should be here pretty soon. So, all right, guys, take care. Have a fantastic rest of um, your week and the weekend, and I will see you again next time. Thanks.